Hi, and welcome to Two Tired Teachers. We're coming at you from Joshua, Texas. RVs off grid. And that's because we are picking up our RV after having a major solar upgrade. In this video, we are going to have actually four parts. The first thing, and I'm making this, going to edit this video the order I would like to see it, and that is what did you get and how much did it cost? Second, where did you have it installed? This is not a how-to. We did not do this ourselves. I tapped out, said, mm, mm not comfortable with that. Then, what did we have in order to understand what we got? Yes. And then, why are we doing this and why are we doing it now? Okay, what we got is we have 800 watts of solar on the roof of a 22 foot long RV. The box is 18 feet. That, those are charging a 400 amp hour lithium battery. We have a, I think it's called a closed circuit relay, but what it is is it prevents the battery from trying to charge from the inverter. Next we have an on off switch for our solar panels. Then there is a uh, solar, a charge controller that we had with our previous setup and that is uh, um, for the external panels. Then we have a charge controller for the solar panels that are on the roof and we have a charge controller for the DC uh, power coming from the van and then all of that is regulated by that bus. One of the things I love about this install is for solar this is as close as you can get to plug and play and what I mean by that is the only exception is if we are boondocking and we're dependent on our battery, we'll turn on our inverter. And But whenever we are plugged into shore power, they put in a, a relay switch that automatically uh, changes us over to shore power and uses shore power to charge the battery. Another thing I like is we have four ways that we can keep this battery topped off the 800 watts of solar that are on the roof, external solar panels, so if we're parked under the shade and there's you know a big window of sun to the side, we can do that. Or if we just want to put a couple of panels out ready for sunrise, we can have them facing that way ready to charge, to get full charge. We can plug into the van. Um, as we're driving, we're going to be charging. And then when we are plugged into shore power, we will be charging so we can use with the uh, the way they have it set up we can charge using any one or combination of those and I really like that the invoice shows you what we got how much it cost one of the things I want to say about this is you know you look at those components and say well I might be able to get this or that but the thing is all of the extras that aren't on there um they've actually yes. added two false walls well one wall so that they had something to to mount everything to underneath then they've put in another wall that is protecting all of that as we're driving uh the straps for they've used hardware they've used a lot of that yes. stuff and if you've ever done any project you know that that runs into hundreds of dollars in a hurry yeah and um so anyway and i feel like we didn't lose that much space under no that. they it's a super clean install uh i am very impressed with it and um we'll show you part of the interview with jason and we found them from we did a google search there were people to, trying to find someone who installs solar. It's not just solar install. It's solar install on an, an RV. RV. <laughs> because you have AC and DC power. And that can... You, you need somebody that understands that. These are RVers. 
they actually have a boondockers welcome here yes. okay this is jason with Hello. rv's off grid and he's has done our solar install and it all looks so clean and and really good so um questions that i'm assuming people are going to want to have mm -hmm. um how long how did you get started doing solar installs yep so i was in uh i was working in construction and my dad put solar on his uh, 2018 motorhome. And, uh, you know, so he could go boondocking. And so he figured out how he could run his air conditioner just strictly off solar. And wow. so basically just lined his entire motorhome with solar panels and, you know, brought it, integrated it into the system. And he was able to travel for three months with my mom and uh, two of my sisters. Wow. And, you know, travels for three months, never had to stay in a campground. That and, is awesome. <laughs> yeah, everybody started asking about it, like, hey, Bruce, you know, like, yeah. how in the world did he do this? This is awesome. We don't want to pay, you know, yeah. 50 to yeah. 80, 100 dollars a night to stay in a campground. And so he got so many questions about it that he said, hey, Jason, we should start a business. So, started the business about a year ago. And so, had, of, you know, I've been installing ever since then. Just word of mouth. We're just word of mouth. Awesome. And you are certified to whatever license to do this by Victron? By Victron. Yep. We're awesome. trained by Victron. And so most of the components you use are Victron? Are Victron, yes. Okay. Victron's the best. Victron. Like we've, we've tried to use other equipment that's, you know, like more simple or more cost effective, but uh, it's just had so many problems with them that we went back to Victron because Victron makes the the very best and uh, it's it's complicated but there's just so many different options where it's like if this and that if this and that that you can just really customize it to whatever needs you you have okay and then if people want to have solar installed mm -hmm. the process then would be to bring their RV to you to let you for y'all to discuss, this is our process, what we did. Mm -hmm. Brought the RV over. We had some idea what we were looking at, not a lot. Uh, but you discuss what's available and then order parts. Yep, yep, that's right. And that's right. so every, and this is something I want to make sure everybody understands, there are kits you can buy, which to get started to see if you like solar. But when you're doing a solar install like this, it is custom every install is going to be unique and different for the particular rv mm -hmm. it's not a one size fits all nope can you think of anything else that people might have a question about for you contact information we have his card we're going to put that on the screen um and location is south of fort worth mm -hmm. yep, and that's right. so i consider it joshua they call it burleson but both of those are south of fort worth <laughs> um and then but this is something where you're you're probably going to be making two trips. You're going to have to come and look, get an estimate, decide if it's something that you're interested in, and then mm -hmm. come back and pick it up. I mean, it's that's yep. just the process yep. that has the, to be done. Yep. And if you know a lot about your trailer, even if, even if you don't, um, you can always call, and kind of based on what you're you know telling me, we can come up with an estimate that way. Like you know, what size inverter do you have? Uh, what's how long is your RV? Do you have a generator? Is that generator built in? Uh, just questions like that, and just make it super easy and seamless. And then you know, once you get it here, we can just go over everything, fine tune and just that, fine yeah, fine tune it all. And okay, awesome, awesome. Thanks. Thanks. It was lots of fun. <laughs> they did walk us through how to use the apps, the Victron apps. They've walked us through, you know, showing us a microwave work, showing us it's. Sean it's freezing the air conditioner works <laughs> so we couldn't actually get the compressor to kick on today because and, and if we had i think i would have cried <laughs> <laughs> but one of the things i want to say up front is you do not need to start with a system like this we didn't we have gone four years on the setup that we had and it has served us well that's the reason we knew we wanted a setup like this one so what we had really were two different things <laughs> one we had a battle born 100 amp hour lithium battery as our house battery 
and that was great. And the ways we charged it, if we had shore power or a generator, yeah. we had put in a lithium converter <clears throat> and it would charge that battery. Or we had a Renogy solar suitcase that had a charge controller that we could hook up. It was a 100, an 100 watt panel. We could hook another 100 watt panel with that and charge it. But it was not charging at all when we were driving, when we were, it, it had to be plugged into something to be charging. So if we didn't have any electricity, uh, it actually died on us. Yeah. Well, they have an automatic shutoff. You want that on your lithium batteries. Automatic shutoff um, while we were in California. And that was when I realized we need to, we're using this so much, we, it's, worth, it's worth the upgrade. And then the other thing, a friend of mine, when we first started boondocking, I explained to him what I thought we were going to be using this for, and he did an awesome job. We had a 100-watt panel on the roof. We actually had three 100-watt panels that we could either pair with the solar suitcase or just have them charging along with the one that was on the roof. And then that ran through the inverter, and when we turned the inverter on, we could charge things. When we turned it off, yeah. you know, we didn't. So, those things had served us well. But we had gotten to the point, but they were, they really were working separately. And so, um, we are not young, and I like to plan and research. That makes me feel comfortable with decisions I make. And I'd already been telling Mylena, we're reaching the point that I'm not going to be able to lift generators in and out comfortably. Um... We've got a couple of years before we're going to need to do something else. And so I'd started looking. And honestly, what we were looking at were small class C's or a large class B. And the one that I really liked was Winnebago Echo. Uh, because it was twin beds. It had a garage where we could put our electric bikes. And it came with a decent amount of solar. Nothing like what we have now but a decent amount of solar. What I never could feel comfortable about is, folks, those things sell for now. There's, they, they were $170,000, now they're $200,000. And knowing that you're buying that and it's depreciating from day one, I just never could feel comfortable about that. So Mylena said, what if we got a different one and added solar to it? And so we started kind of looking and it was honestly just about a month ago when, two months ago, we were making our four-year review of the RV that we have and we're talking about how much we love it and how well it fits us that I realized, why don't we just add that massive solar on here yes. and keep what we have, what we know, what we love and that fits us so well. And we honest, I, I had hoped we might be able to get 600 watts of solar. And the fact they were able to squeeze 800 up there. Um, but, you know, that's really what led us to this. So, if you're looking and asking the question, why are you investing $6,000 in an RV that's five years old? That's a small investment compared to a hundred and seventy yes. to two hundred thousand dollars for you know a different RV, and so you know we love what we have. We know the care we've taken with it, and the maintenance that we've done. And you know it's there's been maintenance. There really haven't been big problems, and so uh, that's what led us to this decision. And we're we're looking forward to sharing our adventures using it. Yes. Thanks, Thanks for, for watching, watching Two Tired Teachers. teachers.